And then finally, this is a data point which you know relates and overlays on top of this. Let's put this up there, which is that this is from a CEO of a voter turnout operation. Quote, in my 28 years analyzing elections, I have never seen anything like what's happening in the past two months of American politics. Women are registering to vote in numbers I have never witnessed. And this plays out in terms of what we've seen from the special elections, mm -hmm. but more importantly, what we saw in Kansas, which is that a huge portion, a number of women, far more than outside the norm, came out to register to vote in order to make sure that they could vote in that referendum. So to have here the explosion of women registering to vote and to tie it specifically to the Dobbs decision and just see the spike that has come after that is undoubtedly going to have an impact in the election. Will it mean a Democratic victory? I don't know, probably not. Will it have an impact in some of the swing races? I would say, yeah, probably. And especially down ballot ones, and most importantly, the gubernatorial races, where Doug Mastriano, you know, people forget, in Washington, we talk about Doug Mastriano and Stop the Steal. In Pennsylvania, they're talking about abortion. Mm -hmm. In Michigan, with Tudor Dixon, you know, here we're talking about Mike Pence and Betsy DeVos. And Gresham Whitmer, she's talking about abortion. This is basically the same in every single swing state where there is a gubernatorial election, where the Republican has taken a position which is outside of the Roe consensus, which shows you it is going to be potent in drawing out those votes. And maybe, maybe they don't vote you know, nationally, but odds are they probably do if they're gonna come out to vote at the state by state level, it will have an impact. And I think that watching those numbers, there's just no way that you can say, given that you know, in general, women vote mostly for Democrats, and especially these types of women, most likely going to be voting Democratic, that this is going to be a boon to them. Not saying it's going to rescue, but it can lessen the margins. Yeah. Right? So in this, this is the, the numbers regarding Kansas. In the six months before Dobbs, women outnumbered men by just three points. Right. So very close, basically even among new voter registrations. After Dobbs, that gender gap skyrocketed to 40 points. Wow. From yes. three points to 40. <laughs> now, Kansas is an outlier because you did have this very direct ballot initiative and this was what people were registering to be able to vote on. And um, Target Smart had put out, and this is, by the way, this is a Democratic aligned group, so just keep that in mind in terms of their data, but they're relied on as like, you know, sort of the, the deepest uh, data analyst in on the Democratic side. They went through state by state and they found the more direct a tie there was to like my vote equals abortion access, the more of a gender gap you had in terms of women registrants. Mm -hmm. So it's like very direct. In states where there's not as much, like in New York, where there's not as much angst about abortion access and people feel like, okay, this is relatively protected. We've got a democratic legislature and all likelihood we're gonna continue to have a democratic governor. There hasn't been this massive gender gap. The more directly you see like my vote is about abortion, the higher the gender gap ultimately is. So that's number one. And they also had some numbers from that uh, special election in New York, um, where abortion was a central issue. This was Pat Ryan versus Mark Molinaro. True swing district. Biden won it by one and a half points. Um, Pat Ryan ultimately is able to win by a little bit more even than Biden was able to win in that district. They said the same thing among the male and early votes cast in the district. Women outnumbered men by an 18 point margin. So that spike in women voting and being motivated alone likely accounts for Pat Ryan being able to prevail in a very difficult part go. of New York in a really swing district against who, you know, a, a quite a credible and quite a well-liked uh, Republican candidate in that region. And the other reason that this has really shifted the grounds in terms of the election is Previously, uh, suburban white women in particular were moving towards the Republicans on issues uh, around school, schools, especially, especially yes, and, and crime. And I think there were a couple other things that were sort of, you know, pushing them more towards the Republican Party. That's why Glenn Youngkin is able to pr mm -hmm. prevail in the gubernatorial election was because a lot of shifts from white suburban women who voted for Biden because they wanted to vote against Trump, and then they kind of swing to were swinging towards Republicans because of schools and COVID and other issues. Well. Now they're coming back to the Democratic Party camp, perhaps not in as high a numbers as they were there in 2018, but starting to rival that type of momentum. And, you know, that's putting aside the money issues for Republicans and all these other things. This is clearly where the ground started to shift for them. Absolutely correct. Cable news is ripping us apart, dividing the country, making it impossible to function as a society and making it impossible to know just what is true and what is false. But the good news is they are failing and they know it. 
That is why we're building something new, a new mainstream, a healthier one, something more trustworthy, something that we are going to need in one of the most pivotal times in American history. We are building up here for the midterms, for the upcoming presidential election, but we need your help. So if you can help us out by becoming a premium member today at breakingpoints.com, we're trying to change America for the better and the entire world. So what are you waiting for, guys? Go to breakingpoints.com and sign up and help us build a new mainstream.